King Island, just off the northwest coast of Tasmania in Australia, has a year-round population of 1,600 people. It's also world-renowned for its cheese and grass-fed beef industries. It's a golfing mecca, and they have a shelite mine that's getting ready to expand. Peter Kempster, the King Island Production Supervisor for Hydro Tasmania, the utility that generates power for all of Tasmania, incidentally, there is no hydro on King Island, took me for a tour around the innovative island microgrid, which features solar and wind power and a state-of-the-art power balancing system, which includes flywheels and battery energy storage. Let's go take a look. Our, our peak um, demand is in winter when it's cold. Um, so we, we have about 2,700 kilowatts is our peak load on the station. Um, it, it's got to be one of those cold, frosty mornings. It's funny how as wind and solar now, there's, there's a, a thousand kilowatts of installed solar on our customers' roofs. So on a beautiful day like today now, we see that affects the system in a huge way. But we're encouraging that and we have systems to actually run and um, cope with cloud cover. So in 2004, we put two larger wind turbines in, a new SCADA system to control the equipment that we were putting in. And um, that's when we started discovering how we needed to have more control over the system stability, um, frequency and voltage control. So we um, did a lot of hard work there, but still met some barriers. Um, and then we, in the latter years, 2012, 2014, we actually installed the infrastructure to actually break down all those barriers and, and have full control over the system stability and power quality. Um, with the use of flywheels, resistors and the battery system. So um, then we had full control and um, we're able to go to what we call ZDO. Um, so zero diesel operation, so we can actually turn diesels off and still run the system at 100% renewable. So um, unfortunately not today, but yesterday it was. I said to you earlier, you're very fortunate. We've actually got a, a flywheel off a machine at the moment. So you can um, see the sheer size of that. Yeah, 4.2 tonne. Um, normally operates at 1500 RPM and um, the provide stability to the grid and fault response and inertia to the grid. So um, a total game changer in our uh, microgrid system as far as how protection operates, how the system responds to faults um, and is key to allowing us to go to 100% renewables. At the moment, we're, um, we've modified the system so we can still get ZDO with only one machine in place, but we'll um, get this machine repaired in the next three or four weeks and we'll get back to normal. Hitzinger diesel UPS made in Austria, um, used in normal um, critical areas like hospitals and data centres and everything else. So it's, a, it's actually rated at one NVA. Basically, when we look at it now, it looks like a standard diesel generator. Um, not a great deal of changes, and you're very lucky today. I can actually show you a little bit more because of this machine being failed. But one of the major differences is the clutch in the middle of the, between the engine and the um, alternator, um, which is, allows us to run as a synchronous condenser in the system. So uh, the machine we're here running next door, it is. The diesel has started, it's online, um, has synchronised to the system, the clutch is open, diesel has turned off, and it's sitting there running as a synchronous condenser with um, 4.2 tonnes of flywheel providing system inertia. You've probably heard in our, several of our conversations now about um, resistors. So um, when we have excess wind generation, uh, we will burn off the additional renewables coming into the system. Um, but while we're doing that, we actually do high, high speed frequency correction. So what we have here is um, three 500 kilowatt resistors um, that we use uh, phase angle controllers to actually control how much heat we put out. And um, the phase angle controllers are actually doing the frequency control at about 0.1 of a second control rate. So 
on a beautiful day like today where there's no wind and lots of sun, they actually lay idle. They are our last point of call. We, um, we'll only use these after our battery storage is full. So then we'll, then we'll start to burn off the excess renewables. So um, a three megawatt battery for 40 seconds, two megawatt battery for um, two hours, and uh, about a megawatt it'll run for up to seven hours. Uh, we don't use it for block loading in that configuration. Um, when we have excess renewables, we will store it in the battery. And um, from there, we'll, uh, but while we're storing it, we're actually doing frequency control of the entire system in the same way that we just explained with the resistor. So while we're storing power or pulling power back out of the battery, we're doing frequency control continually. So um, our rooftop solar process, we require the customer to come to us um, with their technical specifications and the size of the system they um, wish to install. Uh, 7.5 kilowatts and less, um, we will connect it under their standard connection tariff um, that they already have for their home. Um, so, and it's, it's a one for one tariff. So it's, we, we charge our customers about 26 cents a kilowatt hour at the moment. So we will give them 26 kilowatts an hour for anything they feed back into the grid. Beyond um, 7.5 kilowatts, um, we call a commercial installation and we'll, we will actually connect it under a, a power purchase agreement, which is a, and a five year contract. Um, but we still give them the same tariff. So we're, we're more interested in more details of the type of inverter and, and the technology that they want to put in so that it has the ability um, for us to actually control it if required at some point later date. King Island also features a wave energy device that's been generating power for the island grid since July of 2021. How cool is that? Hydro Tasmania have, have worked with um, Waveswell Energy probably for the last 10 years um, in various stages and planning of their projects. Just over 12 months ago, they, they got their first prototype device to the island. We supported the project by facilitating the connection to the, to the grid. And we're working with the people from Waveswell Energy to uh, monitor their, their power quality yeah, they are supplying a small amount of power into the into the King Island grid. Yeah, you know, it's exciting times to actually have it down there. Waveswell Energy is a wonderful technological advancement in being able to create energy from the waves. The way that the technology works is actually very simple in the sense that it is. Uh, in lay terms, uh, a blowhole. In technical terms, an oscillating water column. So essentially what we've done with our technology is we, through a, an enormous concrete and steel structure, have created an artificial blowhole into which waves enter through the front of the, the blowhole. The wave and, and the effect of it coming into the, the cavern or the blowhole is to push air out of the, the blowhole. Once the air has uh, been taken out of the blowhole, we seal it, and then as the wave recedes out of the blowhole, we have this enormous draw of uh, air, which we then use to spin the turbine and create electricity. And now the wave's coming down. If you come here, In it's here. too dark, you can't actually see. It's a bit slow, no, it's that's just the little swirl. We're on a big one. That's the, the wave going down. Now, wave coming up. So the, you might, if you look in here, you might. That's the wave going down, okay? And if you come here and hold this, you'll feel the tower. Okay, it's coming out? Yeah. Ha 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 ha!
<laughs> Better get you back in there. Get back in there and we'll see you have. We've just lost her glasses. <laughs> in the wave swell. Have <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you got more? Were they good? <laughs> good pair? Yeah. And this is our power management system. Like a all, all, all up. This is well, this is our um, PLC, program controller that's programmed and um, controls this and works out, you know, the sea states and neighbouring yeah. doors and uh, bows, etc. to then tell this um, how to convert the power ultimately in the end at the end module is a um, ultra capacitance. Okay. Converts it uh, to a filters it basically so hold stores power temporarily so that we can send it across at 40 kilowatts an hour or 50 kilowatts an hour how cool is that harnessing energy from the ocean to supply power to an already innovative microgrid that's pretty cool